everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here again with Birch Press Design, creating an extremely different design team project. Again, looking at a way to stretch our dies. Now remember, we are paper crafters. Yes, we can call ourselves card makers, we can call ourselves art journalists, we can call ourselves journalers, whatever those terms are. The bottom line though, our medium that we utilize is paper. And with these dies, cutting paper, we can do a lot of things with them. So this is gonna be really off the wall. And I am going to keep this video live because I think I'm gonna to have to really explain this as I go. So, I've already got all my die cutting done. Now, you can see all the butterflies are out and they are live. I promise. I think this will be the last butterfly video, I think. Okay. Um, so, we have the butterfly basics where you can build your butterfly. I'm going to take this bracelet off so you don't hear that because I keep forgetting. Um, where you can build... Um, add sections, uh, create dimension, and so forth. So from this, I am just using these, these wings right here, and I'm going to be using the large body. All right? That's all I'm using from that. I've also pulled in the String Art Circle Collage. This is a really cool die um, because it does a cutout. So just know that, that it doesn't cut the solid circle. It cuts the cutout. All right, so I think that is really, really cool. So I've pulled that in. And then these are the three butterfly sets that are available from Birch Press. The Glimmer, the Eloquent, and the Starlight. And there are three layers with each. Now, always... You can use the different layers individually. You could just use this one layer by itself. There are many ways um, that these can be stretched. Um, I believe, I thought, I think Jennifer McGuire just did a video on, on these. And as always, you know, awesome. Okay. And then, of course, we have the Glimmer. So very different looks for each of the butterflies, but absolutely gorgeous. And again, these are at a higher price point, uh, but there is more than one way to use them, okay? And I'm just going to show you that. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside because as I said, I did all of my die cutting already. Now, uh, the main portion of cardstock that I've used are those memory box um, six by six blocks. These are just awesome. You get 12 different colors, four sage, four shades of each of these colors, and it's a 110 pound cardstock pad. So this is not a paper pad. This is a cardstock pad. There is a white center when you do cut into it. Um, and there are a total of nine packs of these in beautiful colors. And let me tell you what, for this project, I actually dug into seven of them, <laughs> seven out of the nine. So there was a lot of die cutting going on, <coughs> excuse me, and a lot of figuring out. Um, I just came up with this idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the platform yes i said platform that i created for this um okay so what i did this and it's not even fitting in my camera but that's okay i don't want to move this all right so this is a 12 by 12 piece of thick chipboard um i use this for when i make um a hardbound journal um, if I'm looking to have a, a solid front and back and spine, um, or if I'm making one of those scrapbook albums for someone. Um, so I have sheets of the 12 by 12 uh, heavy, heavy chipboard. 
Now, what I put on top of the chipboard is a piece of 12 by 12 burlap. Okay, so it's going to fray on the edges and, and everything else, but I'm okay with that for right now. And then you can see I have four panels. Each of these panels here are cut to five and a half by five and a half. So I have each of these panels. All right, so I've already set this up. Again, it's a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard. Now you don't have to use chipboard, um, but you'll kind of see why I did use chipboard anyway because again I don't want to get ahead of myself so this has already been prepped all right five and a half by five and a half are each of these squares I have a piece of burlap you could use another piece of cardstock if you want and then I just have a thick piece of chipboard now if you have a thick um, a 12 by 12 piece that's um, from an uh, an old pad uh, tablet and it's 12 by 12, perfect. Um, if you want to make this smaller, you can make this smaller. Um, just have fun with it, and you'll see as we go. All right, so let me gather some things in front of me, and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's get our butterflies together. Now, each of them, they all have the same top top. So I'm actually, while these are three layers, I'm turning them into four layers, which is okay. And actually, I am not. No, never mind. Okay, so let's just start getting them together before I really, really start losing my mind, which is going to be soon. Okay, so I hope everyone's good. Um, while you're watching me painstakingly glue all of these butterflies together. But there is a reason why I do like to keep this in here to show you that dots are fine on this side. You don't have to cover every single area. And also to show you that these are very, very simple to put together. I mean, in no time, I'm going to have these butterflies all together. Now, I won't show you all of them. I'll probably just show you two of them because they're all going to be the same. So you can see, I'm just not hitting you know, every area, I'm making sure if there's a point, if there's a curly cue, I'm hitting every so often on the edge. Um, to me, this is the easiest way to put these together. There are other, I do also like to use liquid glue with this, obviously. I don't like to use tape runners um, because I want to make sure that I have a very strong bond um, on these pieces and liquid glue will do that now there are other applications out there um, we have we all know and have heard of the glue sponge now you know don't get me wrong I love the concept and I can just put my tweezers right in that. These are the Spellbinders tweezers. Um, I love the concept. However, and it was me, you know, operator error, error. There was a lot of maintenance to it, at least I felt. Um, you had to make sure that you stored it upside down. Um, even though you were just pushing your pieces in, I was getting glue all over the place. I mean, I'm bad enough when it's like this. Um, it was just worse. So, I mean, by all means, if you have that, definitely works. Um, for me, it was just a little bit cumbersome um, when it came to that. Now, that butterfly that I just put together was called Glitter. Um, this one here that I am putting, or sorry, Glimmer. Um, this one here that I'm putting together is called Eloquent.
Now, also, when I'm gluing these together, you can either start, you know, from the middle and, and work, you know, take the middle, put it onto the bottom layer, then bring the top in. You can work either way. Um, I just also really, really try to make sure that I do map it out because I have put the layers on upside down before because I'm just not, I was not thinking when I was putting them together. Now you can see I'm only adhering the glue to the center of the butterfly because I want that vellum to come up. Um, and really have some, some dimension. This is another eloquent. So I'm actually using that die set twice for this piece and what I'm doing. And again, they do, they just, they just really do layer really well um, on top of each other. You can see I already have glue all over the place. Some are more intricate than others when it comes to these sets. But they are ingenious. All right, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put a line of glue there. Pull this in. I want to line her up. I will make sure that these are curled. Um, because I do like... Um, I very much enjoy that dimension. This one here is called Starlight. So this one has really fine details for the top layer. And again, I'm just really, I'm skimming along this edge, barely pushing on my glue bottle. Um, so either, you know, you definitely want to have a fine tip for your glue bottle. So it's art glitter glue, um, or you can put it in one of those bottles that you can find from Amazon. I know Barely Art also comes with one of those. Um, it just helps you to be able to just glide along. And as you're gliding along, you're actually just depositing dots of glue and that's really when you're using liquid adhesive that's all you need um, is just a small dot Right, and we're going to do the same thing. So a little bit of glue down the center. And we're going to push that down so that it holds. We'll pick it up, make sure it's centered. Clamp down so that it glues. All right, now I'm just going to set these off to the side here because now I'm going to be working on my bases. Okay, so let's grab our first one. So what I've done is I've taken that cardstock and I've done the cutout of that uh, string art circle um, collage. All right. Now what I want to do is now this paper here um, is actually wood grain. It's really cool. So what I want to do is I want to grab, which I almost forgot. Oh my goodness. All right. So I need to cut this. So this is a piece of acetate, very thin. Um, and I'm just going to real quick cut 
this down. And I just need to make sure I have four of these. I'm just going to put this down one more time. I might even trim these down just a little bit more. Okay. All right. So, yes, if I'm pulling in that acetate, yes, we are going to create shaker panels. So, that is... Now, I'll just show you one of these um, instead of showing you all four. And obviously there is, ah, these are very sharp. So be careful. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to show you one, like I said, um, and then I will off camera do the others. So I'm going to put my glue down, going to grab my acetate. I'm going to get that set in place. And I'm always going to push away from my opening so that the glue doesn't come forward. I learned that one the hard way. Okay. So now I have my double-sided foam tape already here. Grab another pair of scissors that aren't sticky. All right. And I'm going to cut this in half, actually. So we're just going to put this along the edge. Jizz. And then I'm going to cut another piece, but I want to make sure that I'm just in the center there. Because again, when you're making a shaker, you want to make sure that there's no gaps um, so that your, your bits that you're putting inside you know, come out. Now I am going to take a square here. And I'm going to put these up into the corner. So it's just going to give it a little bit of a bumper with these in the corner, but I do want them recessed back because I am going to fill these up a lot. I believe that sequins grow on their own and I believe my sequin collection has <clears throat> tripled in size and I have no idea how. Just saying. I am just saying. Okay, so I am going to grab my iridescent sequins. I'm going to put a ton in there. And you want to spread them out so that it's flat. You don't want it to be bumpy because that can cause problems. And then I found these absolutely adorable snowflakes. So we'll put some of those in there as well. All right. Have you figured out what I have done here? I 
All right, so I'm going to carefully, can you see why I say carefully? I'm going to carefully take off the release paper. Making sure that the sequins are not coming up over or anything like that. And then I'm going to put my backing on. Now I am not worried if this isn't straight because I will just use my, my scissors to trim it. Um, I am going to make sure that I've got good contact around the edge. I'm really going to push down. For some reason, this paper was curling. I had no heat on it. All right, we'll bang it a little bit, get all those bits moving, and you can see we've got an awesome looking shaker piece. Um, okay, I'm gonna do the other ones that I have, the all the ones that I've put together, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all of my shaker panels done. I've got the butterflies all dried. So now what are we gonna do? All right, so I'm gonna take each of these panels that I've done here. And I'm gonna put some glue down. And I'm going to push this down into the corner. Now you could center it if you want. Um, that's totally, totally up to you. You guys, if you've seen my previous, you know, my videos before, I just do things on angles and all of that fun stuff. So we are going to put each one of these down. And just try to have the same, you know, distance. between. And then these are going to come in from the top or be in the top corner. So the, the shaker bits are going to be further into the center. And again, I'm just eyeballing where these are placed. So now we have this panel of shaker goodness. Okay. I'm sure by now you guys have all figured out. So what I've created here, my butterfly. Now I could also put the butterfly there if I want, um, but I'm actually, I think, I think I'm going to set the butterflies off the corner. So pretty much what we've created is a butterfly for all seasons. That is pretty much, um, what I kind of created. There was something that I saw. Oh no, wait a minute. I need to move this. Hopefully this dries clear. Oh no, we're just going to go with it. There's something I had seen on YouTube and I'm not quite, I, I can't remember what it was. For the life of me and i know once i'm done this i will just go that that was it um it just completely 
inspired me. Um, and it was from a card maker. I can't, I can't remember. Um, and when I was looking at this and saying, okay, I've got to, you know, I still, I want to do one more with the butterflies, um, and all of that. Something just clicked and said a butterfly for each season. And there was reasons why I chose everything that I chose. So, you know, if we look at our winner, it's got shades of blue. It's got silver mirror or silver frosted cardstock. Um, it's got snowflakes. Um, the butterfly that I used uh, was called Glimmer. Um, the Glimmer, no, the butterfly that I used for that was called Starlight. And this top just reminded me of, of ice. Um, so that's how that one came about. Um, and I will be putting bodies in the center of those. I just don't have those cut yet. For this one here is eloquent. Um, these two actually are eloquent. Um, so this is spring. So I have some bright, um, I almost want to say tutti fruity colors. Um, you know, the pinks, the greens, the yellows, you know, and again, Tutti Fruity was a flavor that I absolutely loved. It was a juicy fruit gum, actually. And it was called Tutti Fruity. Does anybody remember that? Or have I just completely aged myself? Okay, I probably just aged myself. Uh, but they were bright greens and pinks and yellows and these pale blues. So, and then on the inside, I have bright yellow sequins. For summer, I kind of went with a the beach thing. You know, I, summer stumped me. I can you always pick the palette for winter. I can pick the palette for spring. I can pick a palette for fall. But when it comes to summer, it's like, okay, what do you choose? So I went with, um, I went on Pinterest to be inspired. And there was a lot of beach scenes. So this would have been pretty if there were some more tans put into this. But I really just went into, okay, here's a sunset and then um, just some of the teals and the corals um, within the butterfly. And then finally, our fall. Um, the olive greens, the oranges, the golds, the yellows, and the browns um, with this. So again, you can take completely off the wall. Now, can you take this design and put it on a card? Yes. You just got to trim it down. Again, these panels here are five and a half by five and a half. This panel here is four by four. Okay, so four by four and then five and a half by five and a half. And again, the base that I've put this on is a 12 by 12. Now you could make each one of these individually and set them up in a string. That's what originally I was going to do, um, but I just moved into the square and it's a shaker. So it's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do probably is find a shadow box and set this in and it'll be able to hang in my room. Why not make room decor? Brighten up your room with some beautiful butterflies. You could, now again, I looked at these as the seasons. As you can see, there's no statements, sentiments on here. But one, this one could say happy. This one could say joy. Um, this one could say, you know, thankful. Um, this one could say Mary. So again, you can do that same thing. And if I find the right sentiments, I probably will do that um, to put them on there. So again, it's just another way, something very different, um, but another way to stretch our supplies. So I hope I inspired you in some way to say, hey, the shaker would be great. Or, hey, that would be neat if I took that concept and put it on a card, you know, scaled it down. Just so many different ideas to be inspired with. You don't have to do something this big um, when it comes to this concept or this idea. So with that, again, I do hope you enjoyed this. Um, again, featuring the butterfly collection as a whole for Birch Press Design. Um, by all means, all the or, or as always, all the products I use will be listed down below in the video description. And if you have any questions or comments, please 
Make sure you leave those down below as well, and I will make sure that I get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe, be part of my group here, and make sure you ring the bell because you may get notified if that's working. You know, may not, but you know, hey, here's hoping. Um, but I'd love to have you here, hopefully to um, give you some tips and tricks, and I'm sure you'd be able to give me some tips and tricks as well. Everyone, take care, smile, laugh, but remember what's always important for me. Always be creative, guys. And until the next video, take care.